Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Hardesty and today I'm going to show you how to create a Monet's garden painting using cool colors and our cool colors are blues, greens, and purples. And they're all different shades of the blues, greens, and purples. So we're going to create a painting like Monet's garden where he has lots of purples, greens, and blues in his painting. Monet loved to paint his garden. So, and these are water lilies that he created the painting in 1916 to 1919. So we're going to use a technique called wax resist. So we're going to need uh, watercolor paints, watercolor set, and of course we're going to need a water container and a brush. It's always good to have some towels around. And I'm going to be using cool colors, so the greens, blue, and purple for my crowns, but I'm also going to be using some, a little bit of white and yellow because he has it up here in part of his painting. So we're going to create some lines and designs with the crayons and then we're going to show you when you put the watercolor paint over it how the crowns resist it because they're made out of wax. And we're also going to add some purple lilies in a couple different ways. If you have some like tempera paint you can get a little bit of paint. I'm going to use a little bit of purple paint, put it on a plate and I have a q-tip I'm going to make the flowers from. Or if you have tissue, like purple tissue, you can cut it up into squares and use that too. And I'm also going to create a little frog hidden in my lily pads. So I have some um, googly eyes, small googly eyes that I can use and I'll show you another way that you can make them if you have a paper hole puncher that you can also make eyes that way or you could just carefully um, cut them out and draw them. I mean, draw them and then cut them out. All right, so let's start with creating all this fun green stuff. It's like green leaves and foliage coming down from the trees. So I can take the green and I'm just gonna make like wiggly, wavy lines on my um, watercolor paper. So I'm gonna make sure you have good painting paper or watercolor paper so I can take the paint. I have these fun green lines and I have two shades of green so I'm just going to kind of combine them and I'm just creating wavy lines so it's just curvy coming down. So I'm just taking my crown and making wavy lines and both greens coming down to the bottom. So it's just kind of really fun. Some of these get really long. I'm gonna put some longer ones on this side. So now with my green, I'm going to create some lily pads. So I guess if you also had um, color construction paper, you could cut the lily pads, like green circles, out and glue them on after you paint the whole thing. But I'm going to use a green crown. So lily pads are kind of like a heart shape, apple shape, like a heart without the tip. And I can color in my lily pad. And I'm going to make some more of these. Make some big ones. Make small ones. You can uh, kind of do some lines around if you want with the green and the blue. I'm going to do that too. Squiggly, squiggly. And then in this upper part, there's some a little bit of white and yellow. And I'm just going to kind of 
color a little bit. You're not going to really see the white. You will see it after you put the paint on the paper. That's what's so cool about the wax resist. It's really cool. So maybe I can make some of my lily pads get smaller in the back so it's more in the distance. So I'm going to make some small ones as I go up. And keep the ones at the bottom bigger because this is further away than this. And then he's got some more. So I'm just going to do kind of little squigs because it's not as detailed up here. I'm going to make some more big lily pads over here. I have plenty of places to hide a frog. Hmm. Let's see where I want to put my frog. I can make it really hidden. So you're going to find out where I'm going to put my frog. Okay, I think I'm done with my lily pads. I'm going to put one more right here. I'm going to have some going off the page too. Maybe only like part of the way. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my white crown and I'm just going to kind of create some squiggly, circly lines, kind of like right in the middle here. And I can have some going down at the bottom, just like in the painting. And you just make some swirls with the yellow. And then I can make some more. I'm going to make some lighter green. I'll make some lines up here. And then I'm going to use some of the blue and make some lines also going around kind of like water lines just like squiggly lines going in one direction like water like you can see i'm making all these fun lines so you notice i'm really only coloring in the lily pads now, if you didn't have any paper or paint, you could go ahead and um, create, here I'll do the flowers that are in the lily pad, kind of look like that. So it's just like three little circles together, more like ovals together. So maybe I'll come on there like that. See what it looks like when we paint over it. Okay, so now I'm gonna get the watercolors and I'm gonna be using mostly blue and maybe a little bit of purple in the water. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of the blue green and I can add different shades of blue on this. I'm just squeeze on my brush. I can dip my brush back in the water and then go over. And you can see the color gets a little bit lighter. You can see that it resists. The crown resists the paint because it's made out of wax. Let's see what happens when I go over that part that I did the white on. So now you can start to see all those lines I created there. Kind of fun. So 
So again, with a watercolor, you can put some paint down and then just dip your brush in the water and spread it out. And you put a little bit of water in the color and then I'm moving it around. The more water I have, the lighter the color, the less water, the darker. So after you color in, you could darken areas up if you want to. It's just kind of fun. I'm paint all the whole paper. So now I'm just using like one blue color and I might go back and use a darker blue. Also to create the fun texture. Notice I'm kind of trying to go in the same direction because it's water. I'm trying to show that it's wavy. Give another. It's not wavy like the ocean. But you know, waters have like ripples in it, even in like a lake or a pond or a stream. Now I'm going to take and use the little bit of the darker blue down here. Okay. If I see, I see a little area when I color in more with my crayon. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to use regular blue and not blue green. See how I'm gonna add some. Maybe I'm gonna add a little purple at the bottom to make it darker down here. Just having fun. I'm gonna add a little. So you notice the paper because of the watercolor. So once it's dry, you can like place it um, in some books or something on top of it to flatten it out more. some purple at the bottom. And I'm putting my brush against the side. You notice I'm cleaning my brush when I go into the different blues. And purple. I'm going to put a little bit of purple at the bottom here. And you know, blue makes purple. It's going to blending it into the other colors. I put a couple streaks up here. It's 
So now I'm going to use a little bit of more green where the streamers are. And keep going with the wiggly lines with my paintbrush. So now we are about done. I want to add a little bit more green where my lily pads are. I can with the paint. Okay, so now I'm going to see what the tempera paint looks like, or it could be craft paper, craft paint if you haven't. So I'm going to use a Q-tip and I'm going to create those same purple flowers. So I'm just taking it and doing a little line, a little line, a little line. You could just do circles too. These are like little lotus flowers that are on the lily pads. So if I go up here, I'm going to make them smaller because these are smaller little pads. I can make bigger flowers down here. So now I'm going to make my little eyes for my frog. But also, if you have tissue paper, you can cut strips from the tissue paper and then just cut it into squares. They don't have to be perfect at all. So you, what you would do with the square is you would have some glue and you would probably want to wait until the paper is dry. But I'm just going to show you one. You can take the paper, grab it from the center, and just squish it up. And then you just want to put some glue, roll it really well, and just put the tissue paper on as your lotus flowers, but I'll put that, I just want to show you how to do that. I'm using paint. Oop, I think I need a little bit more flower on this one. Okay, so if you don't have googly eyes, to, if you want to make a frog and you don't have googly eyes, like, one of these little green things, I am going to make it into a frog. You can take a hole puncher and punch two holes. And then you could glue. Hopefully these get out. They're so small. You could glue the circles on the paper and then just take a black marker and make a dot. And then you have your hidden frog eyes. Maybe I can make a mouth with my um, thing. If I don't have googly eyes, I do have googly eyes. So I'm going to use some googly eyes. So I'm going to put these to the side. Maybe I can use them for another project. And I'm going to put some glue. Give it a little, little circle motion. Where I'm gonna put my eyes. I'm gonna put my cat back on. And 
And now I have my Monet's lily pad garden painting using cool colors. And I hit my little frog over here. All right. Hope you enjoy the project. Bye, boys and girls.